This is Twit. Earlier this week, news broke that Harvard had rescinded the acceptances of 10 students after it was discovered that they had been posting racially charged memes in a secret Facebook chat. The chat had spun off from a Harvard-sponsored group that was intended to encourage new students to meet one another. According to the Harvard Crimson, in order to join the chat, you had to post an offensive meme. Joining us to talk about the legality of Harvard's decision is one of the co-hosts of This Week in Law here on Twit, Matthew Curtis. Welcome to the show, Matt. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me on. So the school allegedly started investigating the group back in April, and they found that they were sharing jokes about sexual assault, the Holocaust, death of children, just the worst. Uh, fi- that, now, first, let's address the question of free speech. Would you say that these memes are protected under the First Amendment? Um, no, they are not protected, uh, not, not because... Uh, hate speech or speech that is offensive is not protected under the uh, the First Amendment, but because the, Harvard is a private university, if this was in a public university, um, the analysis would be much different. Um, as it is a uh, private university, the question is, what is the contractual language uh, in which they have engaged with Harvard? So, so how is uh, student speech protected on Facebook? Um. Student speech, uh, in terms of like a uh, protection to be able to publish it, is is m- primarily protected in the same way as all other speeches on Facebook. It's the terms of use. Um, so, it, like any of us, uh, Facebook specifically here pro- prohibits speech that is directly harmful, um, including hate speech. Uh, they, they 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 say they engage in rigorous analysis in that. Um, that is Facebook employees who are making these decisions, um, and and. I, I couldn't find a, a, a case on point that, that talked about that being challenged. Um, it seems like people who are kicked off Facebook for that uh, simply uh, create another account, usually. So would it be different if I walked through the quad at Facebook holding up like a picture of one of these memes versus posting it on Facebook? Um, n- no, it, it really goes back again to the uh, the, the private or public um Space. If you were in a public university and you held up a uh, a, a a poster or something of this, um, it would most likely be protected, and it, and it would the analysis would be the same whether it was on a poster or it was on uh, your Facebook account. What about um, kind of Harvard's gr- uh, bigger kind of rules around this? Obviously, this seemed to center around admission. These these were students that were accepted but hadn't quite integrated into the school system yet and as a result you know based on th- this stuff that was in the contract discovery of this al- allowed harvard to kind of break off those ties would that same uh would that same uh, i don't know punishment let's say be applied to students who had integrated into the school and something like this was discovered is it built in to protect on both sides um, I, I wasn't able to get a, a Harvard contract um, or student agreement, but uh, almost all student agreements have different agreements for before you come to school and then you are bound by the student code. Uh, in Notre Dame, we have the Hoynes Codes, which is an elaborate list, which we have to go through and check boxes on, we, you know, we won't do this, we, we will do this. Um, so although there's no uh, constitutional right that's added by by being a student, um, there are procedural process. There are processes that uh, colleges are, are regularly implementing, so they make sure they get this right. And it seems like Harvard did vet this um, pretty extensively, um, but um, I, I think it would have come out differently if they were if they were students. Yeah, I mean they they don't they said that they don't publicly comment on admission status of individuals. So we don't really know. I mean what it, what it seems from the the Harvard Crimson article is that they got word of this private chat. I mean the, the way it was it, it was a, a group a larger group um hey freshmen you guys all meet each other and then there was you know people starting their own private group saying like let's start a group of people who like uh, funny political memes and then it was another group where you had to submit uh, an offensive meme in order to get into the group, which sort of then, you know, implicates everyone in the group. Um, it sort of sounds to me like any kind of fraternity rush that you see on many colleges. Mm-hmm. Um, but so then in, it, it, they they then asked, when they found out about it, they asked people to turn it over. And it sounds like everyone who turned it over uh, 
I mean, everyone who had posted the memes turned them over. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure that there was a uh, there was a stick behind that ask. Um, I'm sure it was turn this over or we are definitely not going to let you come. And uh, I'm sh people, uh, you probably turned it in and hope for the best. Um, it seems like because there was only 10 people, it, it probably wasn't everyone who was in the group, but probably people who had posted specific things. That is that is just a guess, though. Uh Based on the fact that I, I just would assume that in in, a, in an incoming Harvard class, there would be more people who would who would look at this stuff or be in the group to look at this stuff, um, but I, I can't say for certain. So they didn't. They couldn't. Uh, I they they could ask. Like anyone can ask for anyone to say turn over what you just posted on on Facebook. And in this case, like you said, it's a very specific uh, agreement. Like we're not going to let you come to our college and they're a private university. So they're allowed to do that. Um, but the average person, like if you, you know, if I apply for a job, uh, is my employer allowed to say like, Hey, can you turn over what you posted in those private Facebook chats? So employment gives you uh, many more protections than a university will. Um, this is just uh, historical reasons, mostly because you know we've been fighting over what are you know the invasion of privacy between employers and whatnot. And so that's generally a state by state matter. Um, I, I'm assuming that California uh, regulations in terms of what you what you can give or what you can ask for are, are higher than other states. Um, and likewise, uh, California does have a case where it actually incorporated the First Amendment, um, I believe, through the the Leonard Law. And so they were able to sue, um, bring a First Amendment challenge to a specific content violation um, at, at at a university in California in 1995. Um, that's the only case on point where where that's been done. Um, and so even though California adopted that, it, it doesn't seem like other other states were willing to follow. No doubt you know the contents of this stuff is is pretty reprehensible and, and and disgusting in many ways what is the difference between posting this sort of stuff to a private facebook group and then getting cracked down on it versus say an sms message with somebody else and could i mean would the line ever extend out further than this because if it's a private group people might say well it's a private group it's not public facing sure there are a number of people in here but it was never meant to be beyond just this these people like and how is that different than like a group text message thread where this would exist so that's something that um, not in, not in the private school context but in the public school specifically in um, in high school kids We've we've seen recently the courts really struggle with this: is what's private and what's public, and there's there's a circuit split over that. Um, and, and some some circuits look at what's the intent of the sender, and what some circuits look at what's the reasonable expectation um, that it will reach the school. Ultimately, these are, are fact by fact analysis that the court has to engage in in order to reach this. And um, it, it's I think you're right; it's a really hard line um, to to look at. Um, but generally, uh, if you're if you're posting on Facebook, even to friends, you have the reasonable expectation that that can be someone can take a screenshot, that someone can, um, you know, any number of things. Uh, I, I think that there's valid argument that uh, this shouldn't be that way, and we should have, uh, you know, stronger privacy rights in general. Um, uh, unfortunately, we don't, and. Uh, so I think that like something, it, it, the best argument would be something that uh, encrypts your data and then destroys it and doesn't allow the other people to take pictures. Um, that's kind of an annoying uh, fact, uh, fact of modern life. Mm -hmm. And of course, with uh, Facebook also, uh, you know, separate from this, if it's violent or if you're threatening someone's life, was, was that at issue here in any of these posts? It, it doesn't seem so. And the copyright law actually provides a disincentive for Facebook to go and look at these things. Um, so part of getting DMCA protection, which is where you, you send in, uh, if someone's violated your copyright, you send a DMCA notification, they have to take it down. Um, part of that is is that the specific providers, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, um, say they can't watch all of the information. And so the more that they watch um, for hate speech or violent speech or any kind of speech, the more they fall into being responsible for any copyright violations. Um, so it, it's, it's a tension in the law right now that, that has yet to be resolved. 
Well, Matt, thank you so much for uh, explaining all of these details to us. Matt Curtis is a law student at Notre Dame, and you can watch him on This Week in Law on the TWIT Network. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Anytime. <laughs> Take care. Appreciate it. Have a great night.